So you have two threats. You can choose to go back door with this blackmail egg combo, or you can go through the front of big damage and the plant is there to help you wall up a little bit. Hey guys, Sleep from Super Whale here with another video. And today we're going to be talking about the RIMP team. Now, this is a very, very common team that a lot of newer players and people on a budget or scholars have. And we're going to be talking about all parts of this team, how to build it, how to play the team, the strengths, the weaknesses. Let's go over the team itself. So as this particular RIMP team says, it's based off of this beast, RIMP being Ronin and Double Imp. So big damage from Ronin, guaranteed critical strikes when comboed with two other cards and etc. So let's actually go from the tank to the bird. So what is this all about? The frontliner generally wants to be the tank of the team. Something that can absorb hits, something that can put up some shields. Plants in Axie tend to have the highest HP stat. Plants will have the highest HP stat comparative to Dusks, so it makes for a great frontliner. Now this particular moveset, also very, very commonly bred. We can see that it has a pumpkin, so draw a card if this action shield doesn't break. Sirius, which helps slow down the pace of the game, allows you to gain some energy. Leaf Bug, which helps you with the energy gain, and Carrot, which is kind of like an energy neutral card. It puts up a little bit of pressure, it gives you a little bit of shield, and if they break the Carrot, you can get that energy back. So it's another way of kind of preserving your energy, but not also completely passing per se. Now for the beast itself, we have one big damage card and that is Ronin. And then you want to couple Ronin with this card Imp here. So it says gain one energy per critical strike dealt by your team this round, and then the Ronin will guarantee you two other cards. So you want to play the Ronin with the Imp, generally speaking, just to gain that guaranteed energy. And then Nutcrackers want to be comboed with each other so that you get that bonus damage. So this Nutcracker will work with this Nutcracker as well. And this guy will have big damage bursts. Now for the bird, the bird is a backdoor kind of bird. So what I mean by backdoor is that you have the option of the beast applying pressure to the front, or you have the bird that can skip the frontliner by using this card called Little Owl, target the fastest enemy, and then you can do an aroma combo. So it says apply aroma on this Axie, the debuff aroma, is essentially a debuff that will make all enemy axes target specifically your bird. Even if there's higher priority targets, the Roma will override the, pri uh, the targeting system. You can also choose to drop off the Roma debuff because Aroma is considered a debuff onto your target axie, which means that you can use this little owl, target their fastest enemy, drop the Roma with the blackmail, and then finish it off with the beast. That's a very, very common combo. So you have two threats. You can choose to go back door with this blackmail egg combo, or you can go through the front of big damage and the plant is there to help you wall up a little bit. Now, how much does the team actually cost? I checked the bird and for the bird, you definitely want something that is, here we are. So you want a bird that will have the lowest HP. Looks, uh, if you look at my stats video, we you can see why you want it to be lower HP so you can win speed ties, followed by the fastest speed, 61, and then you don't need to worry about the skill and morale values. The moveset the backdoor bird can have, I showed you the one it can be used with post fight before, but there are uh, many options you can have for your tail as a budget. So I have in my search core, you have grandma's fan, post fight, and the last one and swallow these four tails. So all of these are fine. You can find a fairly cheap bird for this particular price point. And perhaps it has gone down. Yeah, it's gone down a little bit. So I had these search cores open yesterday. And you can see that it's not super expensive, but I mean, the team can obviously be better. But as a scholar, sometimes you may not have all the tools that you can play with, and we have to play with the cards that we were dealt. Rimp Beast, also not super expensive. How much it costs? It seems about the same cost as yesterday. Now for this stat, if we just want a pure beast, nothing crazy, we don't have any filters on the side. The most important thing is to see its moveset. So we make sure that it has the Nutcracker, the Imp, the Ronin, and the other Nutcracker. Single Nutcrackers tend to not do as well, if, uh, just to give a little bit of consistency. So if you want specifically this part uh, budget beast, then you want to go with this particular moveset. Now for the plant, the plant again also is quite common. 
and you can see it got a little bit cheaper than yesterday. Now, as for what stats this particular one has, you want to have as high HP as possible. If you really want to skimp out, you can go off of a little bit of HP points and you can see with like a bug eye ear. Uh, in this case, it'd be ear breathing that we have the bug ears. It'll have slightly lower HP and it'll be slightly cheaper, but each HP point will compute to about uh, six HP each, so. It is nice to have higher HP playing it possible. Also, if you're playing serious, you want it to be 31 speed max because the reason why you want to be slower is so that if they serious you, you can serious them back. And in that particular regard, you'll always get the last laugh. Other things to note, for plants, you want to buy the highest ID possible for the same price. So what it means by the highest ID is that if the larger the number, again, when it comes to speed ties, the older the plant, the faster it'll move in speed ties. So if all the other specs are the same, uh, they're the same speed, followed by the HP and then the morale and the skill. If all of that is fine, then it goes down to ID. So you want to be using the newest plant possible, the one with the highest number. And conversely for the bird, you want to go for the lowest ID possible if you have several to choose from. For instance, this one's a 1 million bird and it's pretty much the same price. I would say go with the lower ID bird. It will win speed ties more. Next, we can go over some gameplay of how to play this team. Positioning wise, I would say that you want to put your beast and your bird on the same line. And you don't want to put the middle because if your opponent decides to split their axes top and bottom, your axes will be targeting randomly. So I would highly recommend you place at least your DPS units on the same line so they're focusing the same axe. And then for your tank, you don't really care which direction it's attacking just so that you have the consistency here. If you try to place the, the plant here, you might have a different 50-50 this way. So it is probably best to position either like so or on the top. It, it's completely up to you in that regard.